Good morning. It's the rest of the news. 70 years ago today changed the lives of a lot of people on Earth. Since forming in 1958, members of the Pearl Harbor Survivors Association returned to Honolulu to commemorate every December the 7th. Today will be their last meeting. The group is disbanding. They say, we don't get new members. Survivors of the USS Utah and the Arizona can choose to have their ashes interred along with their shipmates at the bottom of Pearl Harbor. Divers place their urns through open portholes. Americans used to refer to the date, which will live in infamy, as a sneak attack. That has given way to surprise attack, which is what the Japanese suffered last March the 11th in what's now being called a double tsunami. At least two powerful wave fronts merged and caused the massive devastation along Japan's northeast coastline. Three satellites just happened to be in position to measure the ocean, right after the magnitude 9 quake. Merging tsunamis had previously been postulated, but never actually observed. Yesterday, December the 6th, may well turn out to be a date of infamy. Over 100,000 .XXX websites went live. The Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers said, regardless of your views on adult content, it's here to stay, so let's be adult about it. Some universities bought their own name, so others couldn't. It's now impossible to reach the North Pole only by land. You have to use a boat part of the way. Too much ice has melted. Good thing Santa has Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, and Vixen. And who could forget the most famous reindeer of all? Delegates to the 17th Annual Climate Change Conference in Durban, South Africa, certainly have all the proof they need, and that's probably about it. Moving on now to Earth 2.0, a.k.a. Kepler 22b, where the temperature's always a perfect 72 degrees, with beautiful continents, mountains, fresh flowers, and clean oceans just teeming with fish. We'll get to have more birthday parties, too. A whole year is just 290 days. January the 13th is the median date to expect the dead Russian Phobos probe to fall back to Earth. All 15 tons with some lovely toxic stuff on board. NASA's chief scientist for orbital debris says he's not losing any sleep over it. Nicholas Johnson said that since the dawn of the space age, there's never been a report of anybody being hit by junk falling from space. Does the word yet come to mind? NASA is actually working on robotics that will repair and refuel satellites in orbit. India just says no to the Walmarts of the world, which want to enter the retail space of that country, which is forecast to surpass China in population in 14 years. They got occupied. Mom and Pop stay in business. About 2 o'clock this morning, a couple hundred San Francisco police busted up an Occupy camp along the Embarcadero in what's called a surprise raid. All the mostly sleeping people were given five minutes to clear out. There were some 50-odd arrests. Occupy Wall Street got around the no-amplified sound outdoors rule by chanting in unison every few words so everybody could hear. Now, just in time for spring, there's an app for that. It's called the Inhuman Microphone, and it links iPhones together to form a big PA. Well, that's the rest of the news until tomorrow's thrilling Thursday episode. This is Dan Earhart.